The kennels are silent. The champions have gone home. Kraft's dog show is being swept into the background for another 12 months. London's famous Olympia, with its vast exhibition halls, is ready for a new life. The silence emphasizes memories of the past. Within these giant structures, children have laughed at clowns, applauded the acrobats, and marveled at the elephants, the horses, the lions. The big top has never been big enough to touch the roof, and when the circus is gone, the ring of fun becomes a ring of fury. How many remember the days when Georges Carpentier, Joe Beckett, Jimmy Wilde battled their way to boxing honors in front of howling audiences? Essentially, though, Olympia is a stage, as exhibition follows exhibition, and millions come in to wander, stare, touch, buy, sample. And today, the plan is to build a small village of nine homes. There's no easy way to build a house under cover, except that foundations are ignored and the first bricks can be cemented to the floor. When completed, this will be the centerpiece of the million pound Ideal Home Exhibition, a garden village in West Kensington. Olympia's most ambitious extravaganza takes over a year to plan, but only 25 days to construct. Yet in the comparative quiet of his Surrey studio, designer David Gillespie needs more than three weeks to conceive the fiberglass fantasy which will dominate one of the halls. Only the designer can at this stage appreciate the fairy tale effect of the unique architecture. His model will eventually span 8,000 square feet of the Grand Hall. The countdown continues, and the sketches, which for weeks have dominated the offices of organizers Ken Corney and Trevor Smith, gradually blossom into reality. The infinite planning and detail of 12 months is emerging as exciting shapes, but there's still a long way to go. The race is really on. Houses built to last a lifetime will be reduced to rubble within a month. Yet during that period, more people will pass through than could normally be expected in a hundred years. So the upstairs has to be strengthened and reinforced. And there's a luxury swimming pool, a sunshine memory for the nearby sand artists who have brought their skill from the Canary Islands to an exhibition hall in West London. sand pictures from Tenerife, yet it's pulverized lava of varying colors which is sprinkled meticulously on the chalked outlines. Olympia never had a finer carpet of color. The village fills Olympia with a suburban atmosphere as lorry loads of earth precede the invasion of nature. Hundreds of trees and shrubs have to be transplanted in the final hectic days of preparation while every bulb and flower is buried in an individual pot. Rock pools are created almost overnight. Thousands of gallons of water will ripple across the boulders in an out-of-season springtime scene, which unbelievably is just a blueprint of nature. Hours now seem to tick away like minutes, Decorators, carpenters, and electricians work side by side, although patience still guides the hand of the sand artist as the floor pictures near completion. It's an unusual art gallery for the craftsmen who normally decorate the Tenerife streets on the feast of Corpus Christi. There is no time limit on such delicate artistry. And the only brushwork involved comes when the designs are swept aside to provide space for a fresh start. All this in a corner of a garden which never feels the warmth of a sunshine smile. Nature doesn't wait for opening dates, so only at the last moment do the gardens get a final blanket of blossom. 
Even a stitch in time cannot be hurried by the needlewomen working on the embroidered panels to commemorate the Battle of Hastings. years of British history is being sewn into 27 panels by the Royal School of Needlework. Twelve have already been completed, but you can't roll them out at the rate it takes to carpet the main gangway. And then, quite suddenly, the carpet layers and carpenters, decorators and designers have disappeared and the gaping thousands are streaming through the turnstiles. To see what? The room designed with children in mind, perhaps, where the accent is on curves and the furniture is disposable because it's made of compressed paper. Or is this your taste in furnishing? Once you've settled on that ideal home, you want somewhere to build it. Today's trend is to buy a slice of Caribbean sunshine and pack yourself off to paradise. Maybe only a few of Olympia's million-plus visitors will gamble on a dream world. The majority will, as always, come to wander, stare, touch, buy and sample. Yet how many of those will stop and wonder just how it all began? Because even now, it's hard to realise that three weeks ago, all this was 12 acres of emptiness. <laughs> <laughs> 